It's possible. I mean, that's speculation on that, John. But I but mean, that's what I'm things. hearing from you. Am I hearing something incorrect? No, you're hearing as far as what I saw. Okay. Okay, but there's still going to be speculation. There's no speculation who's on my lot. Right. I mean, I saw that with my own eyes. I made, a, made the phone call. I know who was on my lot and who's shopping. I do know the connections are out there, too, but as far as how that means and how that goes forward, all I know is they got an in because they obviously wanted them more than they wanted me because they weren't talking to me about that point. It's me after seeing that. I said, why did you close down this point? Well, we may be looking for a third entity. This is something, as you know, that when I'm a when I'm a dealer for a manufacturer, I have to hit certain sales goals. I got to hit certain uh, facility standards, capitalization, profitability, CSI. I got to hit all those things. CSI. CSI is customer satisfaction, okay. making sure I'm taking care of the customer in a proper way. And all of those things, I'm a five-star dealer out there with a the right facility. I've never had a complaint or any violations with the manufacturer. In fact, nothing but accolades. So they get that letter on the 14th and get shot basically going back to camp because you know it's like going to war with your manufacturer. You're out there, you're fighting a battle for them, doing all the things, buying all the products, doing the things, trying to keep them afloat and everything else. You just fought a great battle, you go back to camp to get rest, whatever else, and they shoot you in the head back there. I mean, that was devastating to get that letter on the 14th to have that kind of thing take place when never in the world, because when I, and same thing, I'll lose my business and I understand if I know what the rules are out there and I can't play to those rules or if in fact I know a level of achievement I have to do and I can't hit that just like in sports, you don't play a good game, you lose. And of course, you don't have any, any recourse because the company went into bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Exactly. Talk to me a little bit about the, the rest of Colorado's retailers. Sure. Now this is, and I understand, you know, these, guys, these guys advertise, which means that radio stations and television stations and it, newspapers it's hurting all the rely media. upon them. Yeah, there's, a, there's a real domino effect. So Absolutely. how's the industry doing here in Colorado? Well, and let's talk economic impact, because um, for each of these dealerships that Chrysler and General Motors and the White House have closed, for each of those dealerships, it's an employee base of about 80. So it's, it's somewhere between 60 to 80 individuals that are out of work. So here in Colorado, we've already lost over 2,000 dealership employees by uh, the 15 ter through the 15 terminations by General Motors of dealers in Colorado, which they're on a wind down, so they're on a little t uh, longer schedule than Chrysler's, and by the 14 that Chrysler, that Chrysler terminated. Let's also cover the impact of the initial investment or the individual investment in each of those what are called dealer points or dealerships. Jim and, and 259 other dealerships across the, uh, across the state would have on average in that location an investment by the time they do the building, the grounds, uh, the upgrades, the equipment, and the inventory and parts and everything between 15 and 20 million dollars. So, so when we talk about them knocking Jim out, they're, you're basically talking about costing him most of a 15 to 20 million dollar value investment, and it's overnight. It, it's, it, was, it was arbitrary and capricious. It, there, was, it was, there was no rhyme nor reason for them to take somebody like Jim Fines out or the other four of the top five dealerships in the state of Colorado. No rhyme, no reason. It was arbitrary and capricious, and, and, and it will not further Chrysler on the other side of bankruptcy making them a better company. Why? Because they are, these are some of their top dealers. So what do they, they know that they've knocked out some of their top dealers. That's why they're having to bring in out-of-staters to try to invest in that. Oh, look, here's, here's a point that did very well for us before, but it's now open, so you can, you can put in for it. You can put in for it, and you've got the connections. Yep. Ah, uh, government is good. All right, let's let's talk going going forward. Um, I, I'm just completely dismayed of of how we're nationalizing huge industries, mm -hmm. including this. You know, you you would have some. Um, you, know, you might have gone through bankruptcy as well, but you wouldn't have had this insult of a company that was having your company taken away and given to somebody else who's got more, more, more connections. What is it that you guys want? We've got five minutes left here, so help me out. So you could wave a magic wand to, to fix the uh, uh, automobile industry. For me, my magic wand is get the government the hell out of there. No more loans, no more cash infusions, let the market take over. And the better models, such as the Toyo model of, of uh, building in states where labor laws are much more friendly, um, uh, would, would, would make a big difference. What is it you want? You know, a couple of things I think we need to have. We just need to have, I think it starts with fair trade to a certain degree, because I think Toyota and Honda and everything else, they bring a lot more product in here than the domestics can take over there. So there's a lot of imbalance there. So a lot of things, it's still not equal. Got to have equal. The thing I really want on a personal level, though, what takes place is I'd like to have, as far as my rights of which to go ahead and be able to compete inside of a marketplace, what America's been built upon, small business, you're out there, you're competing. I'd like to have my franchise agreement reinstated. I'd like to have my franchise back. Let me go ahead and compete in the area. 
put the standards on me, hold me accountable to standards. If I don't hit the standards, then at that time you're able to take my store away. That's the type of thing I think I would really like to see because that's what America should be. When you start having people go ahead and dictate who can play and who can't play from afar, it's not good for us. Because if it starts here and just let that happen, it can go other places too. If only, if only you gave more money to the, the yeah, Obama campaign, absolutely. I think it would be better off. What, what yeah. is it you'd like to see? Well, I think um, we, we need to get beyond these bankruptcies. We certainly need to get government out of running the um, automotive companies or any other uh, companies that should be privately held. I think the industry will come back. I think there are rooms. When you say the industry, I have no doubt the industry will come back. We, we want our cars. Now, government motors might be pushing uh, for green little electric cars uh, out of their social engineering, and they can do that now. They, we've nationalized an right. industry. Yep. But my guess is, and it's just a guess, that most of us who have families to cart around, we, we want the cars we want and those companies that give it to us. And it might be Nissan, it might be Toyota, it might be somebody else. And that's fine. And the quality of the product, the quality of the new car product today, whether it's domestic or international nameplate, is very high quality. These cars, the cars that are sold today on these lots uh, as, as new vehicles are, are really high quality and much longer lasting than, than your, the first car you bought uh, new, uh, whenever that was. And the first car I bought new, I, I expected to keep for two, two to three years or 30 or 40,000 miles. Now the average age of the fleet is over nine years old and it's due to the, the very high quality. So the quality is there across the board and consumers are very well served in that regard. The other, the other thing that um, consumers today can get a tremendous deal, just like what Jim talked about, the $5,000 on average incentives. And, and the, those incentives are... They get subsidized. They get corporate welfare because if you, if you buy the right type of car now, you'll get a tax deduction. You buy a green car, we're going to give you some. And if you buy a GM car now, we're, we'll probably give you some as well. Or what the government will do is say, we'll give a subsidy to whoever buys this type of car. And oh, by the way, only our car company, GM, does it. So I'm, I'm, waiting, for, I'm waiting for them to nationalize big competitors in every field. We've already done it in the financial industry, we've got it now in the insurance industry, we've now got it in, in uh, uh, automobiles, so, uh, and healthcare will be next, so we're, the roads yeah. are happy. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. F most important question, first car you ever owned was a? It was a Ford. Ford what? Ford Pinto. Ha <laughs> ha! I knew it! <laughs> you, sir. My very first car was a 1944. Not Little bad. Yeah. 69 Rambler Station Wagon. Why? Because I know what the ladies like. I'm John Caldera. Look for us next week. Listen for me late nights on 850 KOA. By all means, tell a friend. We'll see you next week. You jip a jip, bamboozle, new canoozle, pippity pop, she called. You jip a jip, bamboozle, new canoozle, pippity pop, she called. But you don't know where to turn it all. The day I met.